Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a black green or Golgari mid-range deck that's playing some of the best cards in standard. It also has quite a few new additions from Wilds of Eldraine. The main reason to play black green is Mosswood Dread Knight, a 2 mana 3 2 trampler, and when it dies we may cast it from our graveyard as an adventure until the end of our next turn. Could also start by playing the Dread Whispers Adventure, a sorcery that draws a card at the cost of one life, so we can essentially keep getting back the Dread Knight over and over unless the opponent can exile it somehow. And then another main reason why Black Green is now an appealing midrange option is the creature land Restless Cottage, which can turn into a 4-4, and when it attacks not only exiles a card from a graveyard, giving us a bit of built-in graveyard hate, but it also makes a food token, so that can be helpful in erasing situations where we can gain some life back. And then we still have some of the classics, of course. In any black midrange deck, you're going to see Shieldred the Apocalypse as a way to offset any life loss from the Dread Knights and our Tenacious Underdog. Another 2-mana 3-2 that can keep coming back from the graveyard with its Blitz ability. And then at 3 mana, I still prefer Graveyard Trespasser over the new Lord Skitter, even though both can clean up the graveyards and are likely to provide immediate value when we play them. Trespasser is just a bit harder for the opponent to remove, thanks to Ward. And now that we have a creature land, it's also pretty easy to switch it to Night Time, since we might just activate Cottage and get an attack in, not cast any spells, and let it switch to Night, where we get a 4 4 Graveyard Glutton, which is a pretty nice upgrade. And then the Life Gain also very helpful against those red aggro decks. And and then, speaking of life gain, we also have two copies of Virtue of Persistence. Can first use it as a two mana adventure, potentially killing a creature and gaining two life. And then later in the game, we can cast the seven mana enchantment, which can repeatedly get back creatures from any graveyard. So that can be a way to get back our shielded over and over again. Now, this is a bit of a nombo with our graveyard trespasser, but usually it works out since in matchups where we absolutely need the life gain from trespasser, we probably don't care about the seven mana enchantment as much. And in the grindier matchups, we probably can leave creatures in the graveyard instead. And then we also have two copies of Liliana of the Veil, vale, which is also pretty good in control matchups, where we can maybe discard some of our useless removal spells and still get cards out of the opponent's hand. And then the minus two gives us another nice edict effect, also good at dealing with opposing trespassers, so we don't have to pay the ward cost. And another advantage of playing black green over mono black is Glissa Sunslayer, a 3-3 with first rank and death touch, and if it connects with the opponent, which is pretty likely unless they want to chum block, we get to gain some value by either drawing or maybe destroying an enchantment, can also remove counters, that one doesn't come up as often, so this can also be a nice answer to opposing ossifications or leyline bindings. And then we also have two copies of Terra Sunder as another flexible answer that can deal with enchantments cheaply. Even against Monoret, this is not a dead card as it can deal with a Kumano. And then later in the game we can cast it for four mana thanks to its kicker and then deal with any non-land permanent. And then we've got some more removal sprinkled in with three copies of Cutdown. We've got our three copies of Go for the Throat as the best answer to an opposing Shieldred. We've got Shieldred's Edict, which can also come in handy at dealing with opposing ward creatures or maybe planeswalkers. And then we also have two copies of Gix's Command as potentially a sweeper or a way to get back creatures from our graveyard. Can also gain life against a red aggro. And then I haven't mentioned Blossoming Tortoise, another nice addition from Wilds of Eldrain. A 3-3, when it enters a battlefield or attacks, we get to mill three cards and then return a land card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So that's awesome if we mill over one of our creature lands like Restless Cottage. Also have a one of Mishra's Foundry as another creature land. And they will also get pumped by the Blossoming Tortoise giving all land creatures we control plus one plus one, and they also cost one less to activate, so that makes it easier to fire up our creature lands with a tortoise in play. And then tortoise milling additional cards into our graveyard can also be helpful if we're trying to fuel our trespasser to maybe gain more life, or to potentially mill over an underdog, which we can then blitz from the graveyard, can also fuel our virtue of persistence, so there's plenty of synergy throughout. And then by ramping with a tortoise, it also becomes easier to cast the seven mana virtue of persistence to begin with and then rounding out the deck three copies of duress as a cheap discard spell can take away burn spells against aggro and against control taking away a key counter spell or answer to our shield root can also make the difference and then our mana base just a lot of black green dual lands and then we've got the channel lands for added interaction as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play our hands missing green mana and we need two of them to play Tortoise, even though it is a nice combo with Virtue of Persistence, getting us closer to 7 mana. I think we'll struggle to cast our 4-drop in the first place. This is better. 
And then on the play, maybe we don't need to cut down. If I knew for a fact I was facing mono red aggro, I would certainly keep it. But this way we get to curve underdog into Liliana, which is good on most board states. And then Tortoise, hopefully on turn 4, finding us a cottage would be nice. And if we're up against a control deck, then uh, cut down's not going to be very helpful. Turn 1 Island, okay. Now I'm kind of liking Dread Knight, which is better if it actually resolves. Whereas Underdog could get countered and still come back with Blitz. And then discarding Underdog to Liliana is also good value, as we find another one. Could also just play another Underdog instead of Liliana, since I would like this to resolve in this matchup if we're up against a Mono Blue Haughty Jin deck. And if Underdog gets countered, it's not too bad. And there's Make Disappear. Okay. So far, so good. And our opponent tapping out for Hodigen. That's brave. So we could resolve our Tortoise, but uh, I think getting a Liliana in play to answer Hodigen is more important. No more distractions. And then Liliana taking up can also be a way to get rid of opposing counter spells. Now they probably have another Haughty Jin in hand if they were willing to play the first one, although opponent just passes. So yeah, start by plussing, discard, maybe another Tenacious Underdog. Or I could discard Gix's Command, which were unlikely to cast and or resolve. And then I can play Underdog, which plays around another Mig Disappear. Or we could Blitz at the one in Graveyard. Both are fine options. Probably hang on to Tortoise still. Yeah, let's get rid of Gex's Command. We have a minus two in the chamber now with Liliana, so we can get rid of a single creature. And the Mono Blue deck tends to only present one or two creatures at once. Opponent discarding a Memory Deluge. Interesting. Okay, yeah, between Blitzing and Casting, I think we just attack and cast a two-mana Underdog. This helps us keep up the pressure. Opponents just casting a 4 mana deluge, that's fine. They will need to find some answers. So our opponent's got 3 instants and sorceries in Graveyard for potential Tolarian Terror. White mana was unexpected and Haughty Jin. Okay, so start with a Liliana Minus, forcing them to maybe protect the Haughty Jin with a slip out the back. And then they no longer have the discount to counter my Tortoise afterwards, for instance. Right, that worked. So in that case, probably just maximum pressure with a Blitzed Underdog. And we could see a Bound Spell on one of my two drops, but that's not a disaster. Okay, opponent actually countering the Blitz. So they're down to 5, and there's a Tolarian Terror, times 2. Okay, but now we can resolve our Tortoise, and we already have a Mishra's Foundry in hand. So, just gotta go wide and set up a lethal attack. And we found a Cottage, perfect. So we've got two Creature Lands that get a bonus from Tortoise. Could even attack with Dread Knight, since we can still use the Adventure to draw a card, but let's just keep it in play. Now a Bounce spell on the Tortoise could still be pretty effective, if they can shrink down my Cottage. Although now Shieldred is a must answer. They could still make Disappear with Casualty, but then they also lose one of their blockers. So yeah, that's step one. See if this resolves. Can still animate my Mishra's Foundry. And yep, there's Make Disappear without casualty, so they might have another one in hand. Definitely gonna pay for this one. Shieldred resolves, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Ideally, find a couple more lands here to get to cast our tortoise. But we've got a mix of interaction and threats. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Turn one swamp and evolve sleeper. Okay, against another mid-range deck. Dread Knights, Trespasser are pretty good. Tortoise often providing immediate value is good too. So for now I'll play the Knights just as a creature. Want to get on the board. If it trades for a sleeper, I'm happy. Might just die to a cutdown. And we found a second green source, even though it's a little bit painful here. Double Lanor wastes. No cut down end of turn. If our opponent offers a trade, it implies that they have their own trespasser that they want to play, which would exile the Dread Knights. So I could just take it, and then what happens? Opponent plays trespasser anyways. Can attack into it, play Glissa, which the opponent can then kill. If I trade, they play a Trespasser Exile Dread Knights. I could remove it with Edict, which would be a decent answer. Even though Edict wouldn't be the most mana efficient play next turn. Now let's just take it. And then I get to play Glissa next turn, I think. And then maybe wait until turn 5 to go Edict plus 3 drop. Although by then we will take quite a bit of damage off Evolved Sleeper's uh, drawback. Point actually with a Frexen Flesh Gorger next. Okay. So now I'm into the idea of Glissa and then just stay back. Could double block Flash Gorger, forcing them to use removal. And then now I'm maybe more into the idea of trading for Evolved Sleeper, even if they have a Trespasser, because then they wouldn't have a very mana efficient turn and I get to follow up with Shieldred. What we don't have is our own answer to an opposing Shieldred, since Edict has a few other creatures it needs to deal with first. Point's gonna take out Glissa so they can attack with Flesh Gorger. But now Dread Knight's happy to trade for Sleeper if they offer. So they're gonna hang back. And play Underdog. Okay. Cutdown could still be an answer to Sleeper before they level it up. Could also take out Underdog Exile with Trespasser. So they've got some reasonable options available. Could see 3 drop plus 1 drop being a little safer than just tapping out for a shield root in case your opponent has another removal spell for it. That could be pretty bad. And we still suspect a trespasser in the opponent's hand as well. So I guess it doesn't leave many other cards they could have. But uh, taking out Evolved Sleeper as their mana sink seems fine here. And then I'm still happy to hang back. If Flash Gorger attacks, do I double block is the question. Trade it for Trespasser. Not the best trade, but we are down to 12. And our opponent actually firing off a Go for the Throat on Trespasser. That's awesome news for us. Means Shielder is more likely to survive. If we trade here, opponent can Blitz Underdog in next turn. And I don't really want to have to use the Adventure on Dread Knights when we want to play Shieldred. Although I guess we could Shieldred's Edict and then still activate Dread Knight and take it slow. So many great options, just want to make sure our opponent doesn't top deck their own Shieldred and we're too low on life all of a sudden. Yeah, sure, let's trade. I guess your opponent does have a Mishra's Foundry they could sacrifice in response to the Shieldred's Edict. So I probably have to wait to play it at instant speed. And drawing a land is good here. So we can use the Dread Knight's Adventure. I'll still wait on playing Foundry in case we draw a tap land. Another Shieldred's. Okay. So I'll pass a turn. Hope they just blitz Underdog, and then I can take out Flesh Gorger without having to worry about Mishra's Foundry. Alright, if they're gonna fire up Foundry, their plan is just double Foundry activation. So then what's our plan? I don't have the mana to fire up Foundry to block and then Edict if they try and pump. If I Edict now, our opponent just activates another Foundry in response. 
which is worse than waiting for them to attack, because then I end up taking uh, 5 damage here. So yeah, I'm afraid we just have to let that one slide. And then... Doesn't really matter here if I wait or not, since our opponent could still pump the other foundry. So they could actually decide to keep the creature land, hit us for 4 down to 4, and sacrifice Flash Gorger anyway. But they get rid of the 2-2. Two -two. Alright, we're at 5. The land is good. So I can play Shieldreds, play Dread Knights, have 2 blockers, save from an opposing Edict. So we can block Flash Gorger. Yeah, that seems good to me. There are some painful top decks our opponent could have, of course. Just removal for Shieldred lets him attack with Flesh Gorger, puts me to 1, and then I can't tap my Helena Waste for green mana anymore. So we were definitely towing the line between getting value but not falling too far behind on board. Might have strayed a little bit too far into the value camp as opposed to just playing a Shieldred and uh, riding it to victory. But if they don't top deck an answer right now, I think we'll be in very good shape. Liliana, so I can sag Dread Knight to it. Fall to one. Off you go. Shieldred's back up to three. Is it going to be close? Find my own Liliana, that's a perfect answer to the Flesh Gorger. So, I can adventure the Dread Knights. And then just play Liliana minus. This essentially gains one life with the Shielders in play. Find a Cottage, that's nice too. Okay, so... Don't have to go after Liliana, could keep an extra blocker back for Blitzed Underdog and Mishra's Foundry. And then let Liliana discard another Shield Roots. It's a little bit iffy. So, close call. But definitely get rid of Flesh Gorger. So to attack Liliana or not to attack Liliana, how do I lose if I don't attack Liliana? Opponent finds removal for one of my things. I think I'm okay just discarding to Liliana. And then if our opponent doesn't kill Shieldred first, we know that we're safe to discard Shieldred. If not, we'll uh, discard Tortoise. And then I can't wait to play Tortoise to power up our creature lanes, which will close out the game very quickly. We're ahead of mana, so... Virtue of Persistence is going to be easier to cast for us than it is for the opponent, and that's potentially a dangerous card here. Getting back a Flash Gorger could be quite effective. So we'll see what they drew. We're just Blitzing Underdog. Okay, so they can essentially draw with it and then decide what to discard with a Liliana. If they draw into a land and top deck Virtue of Persistence for the turn, I guess they could finish off Shieldred, so that would be a little awkward. Nope, opponent just making us discard now. So goodbye, Shieldred. Opponent had a cut down, makes sense. Okay. Found a land, I'll take it. And then time to play Tortoise. Found a land, perfect. Again, plus Liliana. And uh, Gix's command was a nice one to make them discard. Can either fire up Foundry or play Dread Knight. At 4 life should be safe enough. And Shieldred finishes off Liliana. And then uh, we're very close to just winning the game next turn with our creature lanes. Uh, 
Our opponent draws for a turn. And they explode. Awesome. So yeah, got to see the advantage of playing a bit of green in your black midrange deck, giving us access to the Dread Knight, which is awesome in these grindier matchups, as well as Glissa, and then eventually the Cottage plus Tortoise combo is also very nice. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Good mix of interaction, underdog is a threat. We're a bit threat light, perhaps. Wouldn't mind drawing a few more creatures. And then I could start with turn one Duress. Still play turn two underdog. And see that we're up against a blue-black fairies, okay. So we'll take a spell stutter. Cut down will be a nice answer to Fairy Vandal or Obira. And then our recursive threats like Underdog and Red Knight are also quite potent in a matchup like this. So for now, hit for three. Opponent's going to be keeping up Spell Stutter and then flashing in something end of turn. And Obira. Yeah, we could cut it down now before they untap. Good Rain checks out my hand. So yeah, I wouldn't be able to go for the throat and pay for ward. So that's gonna take away one of our removal spells. And then a 4 mana Terra Sunder is pretty easy to spell stutter. So as the dust settles, we don't have the best hand. Edict was a nice pickup. If our opponent goes to activate Sleep Curse Fairy end of turn, I can Edict and that gets around Ward. They could still counter with Spell Setters since it's unless we pay 3 at this point. But I would expect our opponent to activate Sleep Curse Fairy or at least flash in Fairy Vandal. So now it's actually tempting to just tear asunder the Vandal since Edict can answer Fairy even through Spell Setter if we draw an extra land. Yeah, that makes sense to me. If they draw some other weak fairy, then Edict may not be very effective anymore. Alright, we find the land, so that should line up nicely. Attack for three. And then... We can Edict at instant speed. Pwn going for fencing. So, that's fine. Could blitz it now to just draw a card end of turn, basically. Or we can Edict, make sure we deal with the Sleep Cursed Fairy. Especially in case there is another Ego Drain. And then we've got a bit of a mana advantage over the opponents. And I imagine individually more powerful cards like Shield Root. Kaito is a good one. It's gonna phase out so can't attack it with Underdog yet. But a Trespasser's not bad either. Start exiling their creatures. Kaito can draw. Thanks. I'll be taking that now. And a sleep curse is next. Okay, step one Blitz Underdog. They could counter with a spell stutter here. And then I'll have to decide if I want to send both at Kaito. I don't think that's necessary. I'll send Trespasser at Kaito, that way if they want to take it out, they have to discard a card. And then if I cut down the ninja, it's not like Kaito gets to draw for free next turn, since the Sleep Curse Fairy is not attacking. So they did have a go for the throat, they'll have to discard. And then cut down the ninja, so Kaito is only looting next turn. And then we can Blitz Underdog again, at the very least. College will be a nice to play out as well. Would be the perfect time for the opponent to cast an Ego Drain and see a land. Now this is a juicy secret. Opponent deciding to hang on to their spells. Okay, so they can counter Underdog now. 
the day. Countering a Blitz creature cannot feel good. Got another cutdown for a ninja. If they have an untap land, they could untap the fairy, attack, and then draw. But then they would also be tapped out, and then uh, Underdog can get an attack on Kaito. Or I guess even the Cottage now. Four damage would be enough. Opponent just going for a ninja, which plays right into our top deck to cut down. That resolves. And Boseiju with a draw. So I could animate Cottage. I think I still prefer Underdog to draw the extra card, and better if our opponent did draw another removal spell here. Could have considered playing a land first, I suppose, in case they had another spell stutter. So I could have paid for it. And I guess there's no artifacts or enchantments I'm too worried about with Boseiju. Fairy Mastermind is next. Okay. That are just gonna trade or uh, let Kaito go. They're gonna trade. Pretty happy with that as well. And find a Dread Knight, which I'll run out now. Okay, so they get an attack in with Sleep Curse, so Kaito can draw, but then we should have it under control. Mastermind could have been pretty effective, that's kind of counteracting the card draw from Underdog. So now Blitz Underdog won't be able to pay for Ward on Sleep Curse, so that can still untap to essentially trade for one of my creatures. But if I send both at Kaito, there's still a good chance we can take it out. Alternative is Animate Cottage. But uh, no, let's go for Underdog. And then if they have another Mastermind to flash in... I can at least take it out. And if the Dread Knight dies, we can draw with it as well. Kaito down. Awesome. Do we see Mastermind in response, perhaps? Soaring City bouncing Dread Knight. I guess we are down to 10 life here in the meantime from all the blitzing we've done, so that's still potentially a concern. Bones just trying to outrace us now, although making a food with Cottage can gain us more life. Okay, all the two mana 3 twos, so we can just play a bunch of them out. Could also take out one of the Sleep Cursed Fairies right now. While we can potentially pay for a counter, although I guess Spell Stutter would be for 4 now, after paying Ward, that would no longer work. So I think I prefer either animating Cottage, or just playing a bunch of 3-2s out to threaten lethal next turn. I think that makes more sense. That resolves. Does feel like they've got something at instant speed here. So yeah, let's say our opponent untaps Sleep Cursed Fairy. Next turn they can untap twice, so it can actually attack, potentially put me to one. So I could be dead to... Like an Obira draining me for one, potentially. Start by playing another Dread Knight. Looks like a Spell Stutter's incoming. Make Disappear. Sacking the Sleep Cursed Fairy. Alright, now I'm not too worried about dying. So I won't be able to pay. So I'll just play Underdog. Yeah, it was a pretty grindy matchup. But got to see the awesomeness of uh, Dread Knight and Underdog being recursive threats against a deck that can't really exile our stuff. And now we have to decide between Animate Cottage, trying to kill Sleep Cursed Fairy anyways, or even Blitz Underdog. So if I go for Cottage activation and our opponent kills it, then we're still not dead next turn. So I think I like that idea.
Our opponent's gonna untap with a Sleep Cursed Fairy to trade off here. That's totally fine. Fall to one. And play another Dread Knight. Got a food token to gain three, so feeling very safe. And Cottage can cross the finish line. And our opponent goes out on their own terms with Underground River, can respect it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Good amount of interaction, trespass round three. Bit of a number with Virtue of Persistence at times if you exile their creatures, but both good cards in their own rights and up against moderate aggro actually a matchup i was looking forward to try out so no target for virtue but at least we can edict at instant speed now kumano once transformed can be pretty effective against our dread knights and underdog so it's good to take care of it make them sack adversary And then I'm happy to play Trespasser. Hope to find green mana for Tortoise. Trespasser is pretty annoying for Red to deal with, so they're just gonna Lightning Strike it now, even if it's a two for one. And Squee is awesome to exile with Trespasser as well. So yeah, both Trespasser and the new Lord Skitter can be a nice ways to exile the opponent's graveyard. But uh, I think Trespasser is still the better of the two cards. <laughs> and that's enough for a concession. Well, was hoping to see some of these new cards in action, but I'll take it. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn 1, I'll go with Tapped Cottage. Turn 2, Dread Knight. Turn 3, we can maybe fire off for Duress. Opponent also black, a green. Okay, we do not have an answer to shield root, so that's still potentially a concern. Could actually just go for the adventure first. If we're playing a grindy matchup, the extra card could matter. And that way I get to play my two drop and a duress, which is more efficient. Opponent's gonna duress us back, so that probably takes a duress. Nope, goes for a cut down, so they've got some creature they want to protect. Let's uh, take a look. Well, that's an interesting hand. So, I guess that's why they didn't take the Duress. Now play Dread Knight. And then... We'll see the opponent's Trespasser, which we can at least attack into with all our three-powered creatures. Opponent playing white as well. So step one attack with Dread Knights. Milling creatures with Tortoise is going to be awkward. Because that could fuel the opponent's Trespasser. Now if that our opponent traded, we can just go for Adventure and Dread Knights and then replay it or play Underdog. Might as well go for Dread Knight itself. And then I could see Busaju also being helpful at dealing with the opponent's creature land. Their opponent gets Tortoise going. Did not mill any lands, that's unlucky. Okay, so... Do I want to attack with a Dread Knight? It does give the Tortoise a chance to attack and potentially mill another land. Especially if they have removal, so I might want to stay back, just play my own Tortoise and Cottage and take it from there. And we milled another cottage, so we're getting lucky with our creature lands, and that's enough for a concession. I'll take it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand is fine. I wouldn't say exciting, but at least we've got a good mix of threats and interaction. And a cottage as a creature land always helps. So I'll probably wait until turn 3 to fire off the rest. 
even though if we're up against a mono blue deck, checking if the coast is clear to resolve Dread Knight would be nice, although it might be even more important to make sure we resolve Shieldred. So the longer we wait on the rest, probably the better. So turn one, consider. Milling witness protection, so not your typical mono blue. So we've got a few options. Dread Knight probably gets countered no matter which mode I play it in. So I could start with the adventure, and then next turn cast the other half plus duress. This is a sorcery. They might let this one slide. Okay. Find another shieldred. As long as we keep one in play, we're good to go. But we've already seen a nice one mana answer in witness protection. So next turn I can duress and have two mana left to pay for make disappear. So we should be able to snipe a key counter spell if they have one in hand, or potentially a removal spell like witness protection. Alright, well, let's see what you're working with. Another option was to wait until turn 5 to play Duress and Shieldred in the same turn, but since we have another one, this is probably alright. Well, opponent's got a Flow of Knowledge, that's a scary card if they can cast it. They decided to wait on Hardy Jin, which makes sense, and a Moment of Truth, which they can use as a cantrip here. Yeah, probably just take the Make Disappear. I'll play Dread Knight, opponent may or may not bounce it with Fading Hope. The alternative is to take away the Fading Hope, hope they counter Dread Knights, and then resolve Shieldred. But if they have a Moment of Truth into a land and play Haughty Jin with Make Disappear backup, that's a slippery slope. But of course they could find another counter spell here with Moment of Truth. Although they're probably digging for a land so they can play Haughty Jin with Fading Hope backup and eventually cast a Flow of Knowledge. And if we have a Shieldred in play, of course, Flow of Knowledge is not a huge concern. So we'll see whether or not a Fading Hope now, or keep it to protect their own Haughty Jin. Worst case scenario is their opponent finding a land and another Make Disappear, and then going Haughty Jin with Make Disappear backup. Because then they can resolve their Flow of Knowledge before we put a Shieldred on the battlefield. The Bounce spell is still going to be effective, as their opponent decided to keep it in hand. So they can Bounce Shieldred before drawing. We also have a Terra Asunder, admittedly, which we could use to try and take out Haughty Jin. Is that a better use of my mana than playing Shieldred is a question. Then our opponent would bounce their own Jin and be unable to replay Flow of Knowledge. And then we can land Shieldred. Yeah, I guess that's still better. And then now I get to attack for three. Opponent could also decide to just play Flow with five islands in play before replaying Haughty Jin. So we'd love another Duress. Or another answer to the Jin. Alright, opponent's got a Tolarian Terror. So now they're kind of committed to playing Haughty Jin since they can't Flow of Knowledge anymore. So then the coast is clear for Shieldred. Okay, that's an interesting play, not going for Haughty Jin in this spot. Maybe playing around a sweeper, but black green at most can have a Gixis command. So yeah, play Shieldreds. Pass it back. And this flow is going to be quite painful. So hopefully they don't find a cheaper answer first. In hindsight, with how the cards played out, I think I might have wanted to play things differently since we had the second Shieldred. Getting one countered might not have been a disaster. But now we're here. Yeah, don't have any amazing attacks. Could of course attack with Shieldred, trade it off for Tolarian Terror and play another one, which isn't terrible since that can clear a path for Cottage to then attack. And our opponent won't be able to flow in the meantime. Okay. So if our opponent were to cast Flow of Knowledge, they pretty much die. So did they find another answer here? Does not look like it. 
go for the throw it clears Hardy Jin. And that should set up a nice attack. Could be time for a desperation flow of knowledge, but nope. Animate Cottage, attack. And yeah, now our opponent's taking uh, 12 damage off Shieldred. Yeah, this card's pretty messed up as it turns out. Alright, so we got to see our Golgaria mid-range deck in action, and I was quite impressed by how it performed, especially the Dread Knight impressed me as a 2-mana 3-2 that can keep coming back, and then we also got to see a bit of the Creature Land in action, another nice way to close out games, especially against Control, and overall I think this deck is pretty well balanced, where it has tools to beat the aggressive decks, as we saw against Monorad, but it can also keep up with other mid-range and even Control strategies, thanks to some of the new additions from Wilds of Eldritch, Rain. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.